Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials and thank you to our supporters Mr Fothergill Seeds and Cobra Garden. Today I'm going to be catching up with a few things in the veg plot and we're going to look at a range of flowers that will attract bees into your garden. Hello, thought we'd start in the veg garden today and things are generally going quite well. We've had a mixture of lovely warm days, in fact some very hot days haven't we? Uh, some rain as well and although, the, hello Molly, are you alright? Come say hello. Although the ground looks dry on the surface, if I just scrape the top away there is plenty of moisture down there which is great and the crops will grow. The onions have done fairly well in this bed, these were planted as sets, I've got white onions and some pink onions in there. You always get the odd one that doesn't, for some reason that one hasn't done very well at all so that one can go on the compost heap but the rest of them are doing okay in the bed. Now, now we're at the end of June, onions are in the phase of their growth where they start to fill out up until the longest day it's all about making leaf growth the more leaf growth they make the better and the bigger the bulb will be so what I'm going to do at this stage just to help these bulbs swell out here is just to give them a little bit of a general fertilizer um, anything can be used grow more blood fish and bone not too high in nitrogen though so a balanced or if you've got a high potash that is great and what I'm going to do is just sprinkle that just lightly not too much along the rows and then what you need to do I always say is make sure that you always hoe fertilizer in to the soil making sure that you don't catch the bulb with the hoe because that will cut into them and then that will then dissolve and go down and that just gives them that little bit of a boost to help them develop in size but you might also have noticed that some of the onions not many just a few and it tends to be mainly the the red onions I find that do it will occasionally go to seed and this is a really good example of it it's usually a checking growth you know weather changes fluctuations in temperature makes the plant think I'm going to flower it's the end of my life um, and then when that happens the bulb won't swell anymore you'll still get a small onion but nothing too big so what we can do is just to snip these off now you can just take them off and throw them away but if you cut them off with about six or eight inches of stem like that this chopped really finely is great in stir fries or in salads it just gives that really oniony zingy flavor so don't waste those use them in the kitchen something else I also want to show you is just over here because the beetroot has done really well this year Well, just wanted to show you the beetroot because that's done well um, and there's still plenty of time to sow beetroot. If you haven't put any in, put some in. In fact, I'm going to be sowing some in the next week or so because that will then be ready late summer, early autumn. But this is perfect now. It's swollen nicely. This is a variety called uh, Monita. So it's a single seeded one and this is Sabutio, like the old football game, this one. And this is the size when they're lovely to pull. Um, just about the size there of a large golf ball, small tennis ball and I tend to pull every other one because that way what happens is it gives the other ones a little bit more room to grow and we can harvest those as main crop and store them over winter but these are perfect now um, just boil them you can eat them in salads I love them on sandwiches just as a quick lunch but a little tip if you're pulling your roots out the ground the tops wilt really quickly um, and if you don't take them off then all the moisture in that root will disappear they'll go all soft and limp don't cut them off because they bleed so what you do with beetroot it's really simple just hold the root in one hand the leaves with the other and just give it a twist and snap them off like that and that way it doesn't bleed and that will stay nice and firm if you keep it cool in the fridge so I'm going to enjoy those for my lunch uh, but before that I just want to look at some plants that are good for pollinators and attracting bees into the garden
I think it's fair to say that most gardeners like to attract bees and pollinators into their garden and, and they are essential of course to help pollinate all the fruits and vegetables we grow so we do need to do whatever we can for them and a really good way to do that is to plant lots of plants in our gardens or in containers that will attract them in and I'm often asked what are the best flowers well there's no simple answer to that it's basically anything that produces pollen on there and is accessible to the bees and you can start really early in the season with snowdrops and crocuses and daffodils and then the spring flowering shrubs such as Forsythe and Ribes are perfect and right the way through the summer and at this time of the year there's so much in the garden you can plant you know all the herbaceous plants things like the geraniums and the hookahs are perfect the late flowering alliums and then we've got all the lovely salvias that grow through the summer and flower they really attract the bees onto them as does lavender and when it gets to shrubs, you know, shrubs are really good. Things like the mock orange philadelphus are good at this time of the year. And this is one of my favorites. This is a spirea called sparkling champagne. It's beautiful flower on it. Flowers through the summer. If you're deadhead, it keeps flowering. A mixture of all sorts of things is what we need. And even if you've not got a garden, just some plants, bedding plants in pots, you know, things like the simple marigolds and pelargoniums are perfect, or an alpine trough. Anything with a flower on it's got to be good. And the more we can do to help the bees, the better it's going to be for us in the long run. We're really lucky that we've got some hives in our garden. They're not ours, they belong to a friend and he looks after them, but we get the benefits because as these busy bees are out in our trees and on all the plants collecting pollen and nectar to feed the young inside the hive, they're of course pollinating all our plants. And we think we get much better crops of apples, plums and pears and vegetables as a result of them. Now I know you can't all have bees in the garden, but you can do your bit to attract bees and wild bees in to do the pollination. And the benefit of of course of this is you get beautiful honey and already Nick's taken two lots of honey off this year which is delicious. So is it going to be a good year for honey Nick? I think so judging by the state of these frames it's a very good year it's been a really warm spring the bees have been very busy here's a frame out of the box beautifully capped a bit less at the bottom there but uh, the rest of it's very well capped should go and extract that now worth a few pots forward to trying that. So if you can get local honey off a local beekeeper do that because it's really tasty and I'm a great believer that a spoon a day helps to keep rid of my hay fever so do all you can to support bees and beekeepers. Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and thank you for your likes, shares and comments. I'm going to have beetroot for lunch and then later I'm going to have some honey from the garden on some toast, which will be delicious. Next time we've got a real treat for you. We're going to see Jonathan Mosley, who's a floral designer in his North Derbyshire garden. So we'll see you then. Bye.